With massive league shifting moves that came from the Damian Lillard trade, it's understandable that some trades and moves have kind of gone by the wayside especially after some of those moves came at the beginning of the offseason, but that definitely doesn't mean that those aren't going to have massive impacts on the league and the respective teams. And one of those moves is Chris Paul joining the Warriors, and although the Warriors might not be getting the best version of CP3, this move should still have a massive impact that some people are overlooking. This all started after the Suns decided to go all in on KD and Devin Booker by trading off Chris Paul and a massive stack of picks to bring in Bradley Beal. And with the Washington Wizards finally taking their medicine and choosing to rebuild, it was pretty clear that they were most likely going to try and flip CP for more picks and maybe some younger talent. Which is exactly what they did a couple days after, sending Chris Paul now to the Warriors in exchange for Patrick Baldwin, Ryan Rollins, Jordan Poole, a first round pick and a second round pick. And just like that, Draymond Green finally has a teammate that can share the duty of getting your nut shots in. But beyond that, it does seem that both Steph and CP3 spent all summer in the gym building chemistry. But with both players being natural point guards, it's kinda hard to see how that backcourt is gonna play out. As Chris Paul didn't really seem too happy when reporters assumed he'd be coming off the bench, and then gave a very political nod answer when asked if he'd even be willing to come off the bench. Mark Spears has recently said that he's heard that the Warriors are gonna look to start both CP and Curry together in the backcourt, but this is just in short spurts. But the problem with this is that the Warriors are going to have to figure out if they want to move Wiggins or Looney to the bench, who both have proven to be very important pieces to this team, especially come playoff time. So Steve Kerr and the rest of the coaching staff are going to have to wait what's more important, keeping CP3's ego intact or making sure that their starters come playoff time have experience playing together in the regular season. Steve Kerr has also expressed his interest in playing CP, Steph, Wiggins, Clay, and Looney in a lineup together that would see Clay move to power forward. And personally, I can't wait to see how Clay manages to guard players like Zion, KD, AD, or Sabonis, and that's just mentioning players in his conference. But even if they move Wiggins to the bench, Clay back to small forward, put Draymond in at power forward, this doesn't solve the issue that the Warriors are just a tiny team. With Dario Saric being the tallest player on the team standing at 6'10". In fact, the Warriors have the smallest team in the entire league. With the second smallest team, the Chicago Bulls being an average of 2 inches taller coming in at 6'6". I know that Steph and the Warriors have mastered small ball lineups, but it's not like the Warriors made any moves to bring youth to this basketball team, instead bringing in a 38 year old declining Chris Paul. So really it's only a matter of time before the things that made this team successful start to backfire. And it seems at least that there's a small chance Chris Paul could be the beginning of the end. CP3 to the Warriors brings substantial financial flexibility to the Golden State Warriors in the coming years. However, the team's main requirement was not a ball-dominant point guard, but rather front-court support. Of course, due to Jordan Poole's lackluster postseason performance and his hefty contract, the Warriors might have had limited options. Nonetheless, with Chris Paul now on board, the Warriors find themselves in need of a clear long-term strategy. So what is the Golden State Warriors blueprint for the foreseeable future? Chris Paul has just two years remaining on his max contract, with the last season next year being non-guaranteed. The Warriors could effectively utilize him as an expiring contract in potential transactions, get a better fit, and maybe even some youth, which would likely be the correct way to go about doing things, especially if things don't work out and the fans aren't exactly thrilled with CP3's performance a few months into the season. The thing is, according to Chris Haynes, the team will be trying to go all in with Chris Paul this season rather than look to trade him. If he ends up playing the year out, or even eventually signs another contract with Golden State, it's tough to think that Chris Paul won't naturally end up becoming a sixth man. As we've mentioned earlier, the Warriors are effectively going to be forced into an aging and slow small ball, if they want to play both Curry and Paul at the same time. If they want this to change, they'll have to make some huge structural changes to the team, and the team might not resemble the Golden State you and I know. Given that the league is getting bigger and more skilled every day, and the Warriors aren't getting any younger, it's hard to see the core of this lineup performing to the standard that Golden State fans expect. This basically leaves two options in the future that are to either put Chris Paul into a sixth man role or trade him. What path will they choose? Well, it really depends on if Chris Paul will put aside his ego and do what's really best for the team. Chris Paul in reality could start on a ton of teams all the way until his retirement, but will he win a chip now that he's an old man? Well, probably not. At least not starting in a huge role. So if he wants rings, then he should probably try his best to fit into Golden State and start cooking benches. I think we all know CP3 though. 
it's likely he may want to start for a few more years, especially being the gifted floor general that he is, and always will be. Let's face the facts though, the Warriors aren't going to win a ring with Chris Paul starting, and that's a big problem, because Curry isn't done just yet. He showed us that in 2022. As the Warriors hunt for one or two more rings to really cement their era of dominance into the history books, the last thing they need is old man Chris Paul forcing them into small ball every night and trying to lead a team that's done just fine without him. If Chris Paul really wants a ring, it's doable with this team for sure, but he has to shut up and just play his role for basically the first time in his career. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like or maybe even consider subscribing. It would mean a lot to us. And we'll see you next week.